on my study guide, chapter 10, verse 38. We're going to be in the Gospel of John, chapter 11. We have to do a little bit of review. Good to be here tonight. We want to welcome you. Just remember Thursday, 7 p.m., from the worship of the Lord. Remember those that are not with us. I texted with Brother Zach. He's on his way back. Exactly. We should be here with us Thursday. We're looking forward to seeing you again. Good to have everyone in the house of the Lord. It's good to have my wife in this. Amen. Amen. And since I'm calling her out, just pull a bunch of stand and ask the Lord's blessing and call her and find us. Thank you for this time of learning your word, of spending time in your word. It's always such a blessing. Thank you for our pastor for his studies and helping us to get closer to you. Bless him tonight. Bless each one tonight in the house of God. And Lord, we give you all the glory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we finished off last Bible study, not with the whole book, but in chapter 10, verse 40 and 42, when they came and they tried to take Jesus again, and of course they were unsuccessful because it wasn't time for him to know what it was. Okay? He shared with you that he said that nothing could be done against them until Pilate later on, unless it was given him from heaven. And how when they came to take him, to crucify him, the mob, that he simply asked them who they were looking for. And they said, Jesus. And he said, I'm he. And they all fell down on the ground. Okay? God uh, allowed Jesus to be crucified for our sins. It wasn't that the devil or man had power over him. They don't. Okay? Jesus willingly gave himself as a sacrifice for us. He did it deliberately. He did it willingly. No one made him do it. Okay, yes, it was the will of God the Father, but as we read, it was also his will. And he willingly gave himself for you and I. Okay, so we go on tonight, and um, there at the end of chapter 10, where many believe, that believed on him, Jesus went to where John had been baptizing, the Jordan River. And he stayed there, and there were many that believed on him, not only uh, because of what he did, but because of the words of John the Baptist, okay, along with the miracles that Jesus did. There were many that believed on him. So we go into chapter 11, and we begin reading now in verse 1. <coughs> Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother was sick. Okay, so we can read about that okay, in Mark chapter uh, 14. Okay. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, Behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Okay, so this man Lazarus, and his name is the same. It comes from the name Eleazar. And that name has meaning. And most of these Jewish names have a meaning. Okay, the meaning of the name Eleazar or Lazarus means that God helps. And truly God would help him. And you're going to see that here. Shortly, not only him but his sisters. Okay, so Bethany was close to Jerusalem. It's about two miles away. It's not very far. It's just maybe you could say like it was a suburb or something like that. They were close to Jerusalem, and it's the same Martha and Mary. Not only Mary that anointed uh, the Lord with ointment and cleaned his feet with her tears and wiped his feet with her hair. Okay. But it's the same Martha and Mary from Luke chapter 10. Okay, and in that account, we have uh, Jesus teaching, and Martha was stressed out. Yes, she was she serving, was. Yes, she was. and Mary was at the feet of Jesus listening to what he had to say. And Martha kind of got upset, and she was stressed out, as people get at times. And kind of rebuked the Lord and told him, 
hey, why don't you tell my sister to come help me? And the Lord said to her that Mary they had chosen that good part. And she'd chosen something good that she needed to do. We sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to him. You know, if we do that more often, maybe we wouldn't be so stressed out. Spend time in God's Word, spend time in prayer, in the yes. presence of the Lord. It helps us to think right and get our priorities right. And I was coming to church tonight, and uh, I have a tendency, when I'm thinking about something, I'll move my hands. Okay, my wife can always tell when I'm driving and preaching. It's like this. I do that too. My hand. I said, you're preaching. Well, I wasn't preaching tonight. I was going like this. She said, what are you doing? I don't know what it was about tonight, but everybody and your grandmother was out driving, and they were driving slow. I said, I'm practicing. She said, what are you practicing? I said, when these people get, on, get in front of me again and drive their brakes, I'm going to go like this. I didn't do it. Brother, I, 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 didn't do it. I know the feeling, brother. Uh, so, All right, no, we, get, we get stressed out over oh, things that really don't matter, do you? So what if it takes another two minutes right. to get to the church? Yes. What's it going to matter? Exactly. Okay? But when we, when we are not being spiritually minded, when we're not spending time with God, when we're not spending time in His Word, we get stressed out sometimes, don't we? We get cold. Sure we do. Okay? And it's just a lesson for us. Jesus told Martha that Mary was doing what she needed to do. It probably would have been good for Mark to sit down. You know, the dishes are going to get done when they get done. Yeah, that's right. Tomorrow will okay? They'll get done when they get done. We need to spend some time with the Lord. I don't. I didn't clean my house in three months, Pastor. Well, you know. I've been spending time with Jesus. Yeah, okay. That, that doesn't work. Uh, we have to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> have you really been spending time with Jesus? Okay. Now, maybe that wasn't speaking in tongues that was going on. Maybe it was snoring. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, okay. So it's the same, the same, the same sisters, the same family. Jesus loved this family. Thank God, Jesus loves us. Amen. Jesus loves us. And so, word came that uh, Lazarus was sick. He was very, very ill. Okay. And sick enough that the, the sister sent someone to let the Lord know. Okay? They sent someone to tell Jesus. That's a good thing. You know, the Bible tells us if there's any sick among us, let's call for the elders of the church. Pray for them. Okay? If you need prayer calls, let us know. Text us, call us, see us in church, we'll pray with you. Okay? Pray yourself also. Okay? Thank God. God is a healer. Okay, and we, we uh, believe that wholeheartedly. There are people, I remember pastoring in Oklahoma, and uh, there was a family there, and the lady began to talk about miracles, and she said, you know that those things that God used to do back in the Bible days. Oh. Said, no, 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 God no. still does those Amen. things. Amen. That doesn't change. God's power hasn't diminished. Okay, God still does those things. So pray for people, okay? So, Go on to verse 4 now. Okay. When Jesus heard that, he said, this, when Jesus heard that, excuse me, you know, put the comment in there, he said, that sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Okay. So, a messenger was sent, and Jesus was over there by the Jordan River, there in Bethany, that there, Martha and Mary and Lazarus are in Bethany which is right next to Jerusalem. So the messenger came to where the Lord was and let him know what was going on. And Jesus sends word back okay, to the sister specifically that his illness is not on the dead. Okay, so God the Son is telling them. Okay, the same Mary that sat at his feet, the same Martha that was told that uh, Mary had chosen the good thing, Okay? He's telling them that uh, this illness is not unto death. He gave them his word. When Jesus says something, you can bank on it. You can count on it. 
Okay, well, what if it doesn't look like that? It doesn't matter what it looks like. If God says something, that's it. God doesn't care what it looks like. Okay, God brings something from nothing. God can cause things that are as if they're not. Amen. Okay, so if God says something is a certain way, that's the way it's going to be. Okay? So, uh, you know, we have to believe God's word, not what we may even see happening. Sometimes we see things, but it seems this way, it looks this way. You know? Let's get, let's let God do what God's going to do. And we'll see okay, what happens. God's going to keep his word. Okay, so God would show his power. And it's not that they were seeking a sign, okay, but God would show one to glorify himself, to show what he could do and who he really is. And again, Jesus didn't just talk about being the Son of God. His actions proved that he is the Son of God. And there's a lesson there for us. We don't want to just call ourselves Christians, say that we're Christians. We need to let our actions show that we are Christians. Okay, that we are children of God. Okay? If Jesus wasn't doing any of this, someone could have said, prove it. But he was proving it. Okay? Well, brothers and sisters, we need to live our life in such a way that our life proves that we are what we say we are. Yeah. Okay? Let's go to verse 5 now. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Man, that's a wonderful thing. He loves us. you got to remember that. Thank okay? you, Jesus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. And so Jesus loves them as he does you and I. But he didn't come right away. Okay? Sometimes we question God's love when things don't happen the way that we want them to. Uh oh. And we can't do that. Just because God doesn't work out things the way that you and I think they should be worked out doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. And believe it or not, like us believe, God does know better than we do. Okay, we need to trust the Lord. Okay, Jesus knew exactly what he was doing, doing it the way that he was directed of the Father. Okay, and uh, he would wait two days before leaving where he was by the Jordan River, and he would work a greater miracle than just healing Lazarus. Now, healing's a wonderful thing. That's a great miracle. And then you compare that to raising somebody from the dead? Somebody that had been dead for four days? And which of those uh, things would bring, bring greater glory to God? The miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead would. Okay, so God would show us power, brother and sister, and... Uh, Sometimes we have to wait. God is getting getting ready to do something greater than what you think. Okay, doesn't the Bible teach us that He's able to do exceeding abundantly of all that we ask or think? He does. God is able to do so far greater than what we can even imagine. Okay, well maybe God's getting ready to do something like that. And you're waiting on something, you're praying about something. Okay, maybe it hasn't come to pass yet. Don't fret, don't doubt. Okay? Maybe God is going to do something greater on you than what you're asking. Okay? Alright, let's go on now. We're in verse 7. Okay? Then after that, said he to his disciples, let us go after the two days. Okay? Say anything to his disciples, let us go into Jerus Judea, again, excuse me, where Jerusalem is, where Bethany is. His disciples said to him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither or there again? So Jesus is going to go back to Jerusalem, to that area. And if we remember, okay, we see them trying to kill him yes, at the end of chapter 10. Okay, and even back in chapter 7, and I think we shared with you last Bible study, that we can see eight different times that they tried to take him and they couldn't. 
in, in the Gospels. Okay? And so he would always escape because it was not yet his time. Look at the faith of the Lord. Okay? I'm not going to be taken until it's time for me, until I allow them to take me. Okay? Even when they were trying to kill him, and I'm not, you know, we're not promoting being unwise. Okay? Jesus gave us another example where he was told by the devil during his temptation in the wilderness to go up to the pinnacle of the temple and jump off. And Jesus said, you shall not tempt the Lord. Not Amen. I'm not going to put myself in a foolish situation All right. and, and force God's hand to protect me by doing something stupid. Right. I'm a Christian. Watch me step out in front of this train. Oh, right. That's <laughs> dumb. Yes. Suicide. Okay, God doesn't tell you, brother and sister, and if it's God, we know it's God. Okay, we know it's God with Abraham and Isaac. And God stopped him from doing that. Uh, but people say things that God made them do something that's totally contrary to what the Bible teaches. That's not God. God does not contradict his word. Okay? And if you don't do something foolish, then you really got to pray about what you're doing. And if you don't know what to do, you know what the best thing to do is? Nothing. Okay? Sometimes you just need to Stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Because we make a mess out of things when we try to force situations. A lot of times we make things worse. Think about uh, Abraham and, and Hagar. I bet there was a lot of regret in Sarah's life after that. And even that, that uh, woman was mocking her. And, Man, look, I got a kid. We don't have one. I'm glad you have one. Really? They go read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay? Think about human nature. Okay? And there's some stuff, there's some stuff in the Bible. You think some of the stuff was written. Some of those folks went on to be writers of soap operas or something. There's <laughs> <laughs> some crazy stuff going on. God knows all about um, mankind and, and his problems. He knows all about mankind yeah. and their failures and their sin. We're not, you know, we're not gonna bring anything to God that God hasn't already seen, probably more of it. Nothing new under the sun. Okay? We got a problem, let's bring it to God in prayer. We, we sin, what's the Bible tells us to do? Let's confess our sin and it's faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, so anyway. Uh, Jesus is going back to Jerusalem. They had tried to kill him many times. Okay, they tried to take him. But he's always escaped because it's not his time. It's going to be nine now. Jesus answered. No, let me clarify something. I'm not saying the Bible is a story. Of course not. Okay, it's not what we're saying. We're saying that there's a lot. God knows all about mankind and the sin that, that uh, mankind commits. Okay. And some of it is very sordid and you know, dirty. But you know what? God saves people out of stuff. Yes. God delivers people from stuff. Yes. Okay? God put, puts lives back together. So let's go on. In verse 9. Jesus answered. Now, remember, they're telling him, Oh, you're going to go back there and they're trying to kill you. What are you doing? Okay? Do you want to do this? Jesus answered. Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of his world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. So there are twelve hours in the Jewish days. During the daytime, I told my wife on the way here, you know, every day that we drive down, if the sun is, as time goes on, the sun is a little bit further down, and I don't I have to put my shades on. And I said, I'm so glad that we don't have to do that silly turn back the clock garbage. Yeah. Oh, wow. I said, it's, it's nice not even have to think about that. And I said, I don't like coming to church one service and it's nice and bright and sunny. And then a few days later, after you change the clock back, you come into church in the dark. I said, I like this gradual, yeah. 
kind of going in this winter time. You know, the sun's getting a little lower, a little earlier, but it's gradual. It's not abrupt. You know, one day you're, you got sunlight at 6.30, the next day it's 5.30 and it's dark outside. And your body's like, what's going on? <laughs> Why am I so tired? Lydia. And yeah, he's telling them there, 12 hours from the Jewish day, daytime, 6 in the morning to 6 at night. He said, if a man walks during the daytime, we're going to go somewhere. Okay, now they didn't jump in the car and turn the headlights on and drive at night. They walked. And it was a lot easier to walk in the daytime when you could see where you were going. Okay, now we walked up that hill over there. It is all paved. But imagine walking you know, a, a day's journey, you know, however many hours it took to get from the Jordan River to Bethany. It's a pretty long way if you look at it. Okay? Unpaved the roads. And I know that the, the Romans did some road paving and stuff and stuff like that. But I guarantee you, not every little road was paved. Okay? No doubt it was a lot easier to walk in the daytime where you could see where you were going. Not yes. stub your toe on a rock. Not like you were going around with flashlights. <laughs> oh, but you got your bag light? No. <laughs> Take a flashlight. You got a No, we didn't. You got it. Everybody got flashlights. No. Okay. Don't forget your turn. <laughs> You're acting like his mom now. Kind of <laughs> okay. Okay. You can see in the daytime. And it keeps you from hurting yourself. It's a lot easier to walk in the daytime. Now that road was paved, that path was paved. I don't know if they have lights on it or not. I don't, know. I don't think they do. I don't even remember seeing any, but maybe there is. But I can imagine even walking up that paved path at night. Okay? It would be a lot harder. But when you walk in the day, you can see where you're going. And Jesus wasn't doing this just blindly, brother and sister. He had direction from God the Father. Okay? He wasn't just going on his own, on some whim. Okay? If you walk in the night, in the light naturally, you'll see where you're going and the obstacles that are before you. The light of this world is what? The sun. Okay? S-U-N. It gives you light to see. But a man walking at night when the sun is down is going to stumble because he has no light to illuminate his path. But Jesus had an appointed time to do the Father's will. Even when they eventually took him, they would have no power against him at all unless God allowed it. If you remember, we talked about the woman caught in adultery. Remember that? Okay? Jesus prayed and was directed by the Father in that situation. Well, in this situation, he walked in the knowledge of what God the Father wanted him to do. Okay? If you live your life according to the word of God, you are walking in light. Okay? Doesn't mean that you'll never have a problem. Jesus put it another way in another place. He talked about building our lives, whether we're building it upon sand or building it upon rock. The storms are going to come. It's life. Okay? But if you're building your life upon the word of God, your life is going to stand, whether you feel like it or not. Trust God. If you're walking in the light, okay, because he is with, he's in the light. We have fellowship with him. The blood of the Son, Jesus, cleanses us from all sin. God is illuminating our path, okay? 1 John 1, 5, beginning there. This, uh, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. We say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Okay? That's why, brothers and sisters, it's important how we hear and receive the word of God. Did we just come here to check off the box? I went to church this week. Are we coming with an attentive heart? Are we coming with ears to hear? Because we want to build our life upon what God is trying to teach us. Amen. Okay, so that we can know where we're going. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to get off the path. 
I'm going to stay on the path. Okay, his word, Psalm 119, 105, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Okay, let's go back to chapter 11, and we are in verse 11 now. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus, Lazarus sleepeth. Okay, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. They thought he was just naturally sleeping. And how be it, how be it Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Okay? So Jesus had said in verse 4 that the sickness was not unto death. He's not contradicting himself. He knew what he would do. Okay, he uses the word sleep as we read about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised and put up the door, and we shall be changed. Amen. Okay, so the disciples saw that he was referring to rest, but Jesus knew Lazarus was already dead. He waited until the man died. Okay. Yeah, let's go on now. Verse 15. And I am glad for your sake that I was not there, to the intent that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, and unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Okay? So this goes along with uh, verse 4. And look at verse 4. Look back at verse 4. Okay, when Jesus heard that he was sick, excuse me, when Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not in the death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So this, what we just read, goes hand in hand with that. Okay? God would be glorified, and the disciples would increase in faith. Yeah. Except yeah. for good old doubting Thomas. Okay, let's go to good old God. Okay. Then you see all the moment times that they tried to kill Jesus and Jesus did. Okay. Wasn't, wasn't time for them for him to die. Okay. Jesus would uh, he had told them twice that he would raise Lazarus from the dead. And he had told them he was okay, he was walking in the day in the day or in the direction of the Father. They didn't have to worry about the Jews taking him. And what does, what does Thomas say? Let us go and die with him. And let's go to verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now let's look at this. Remember, a messenger was sent. It was a day's journey from where Jesus was. Came by the Jordan River to Bethany. So a messenger was sent. It took him a day to get there. He gets there. He lets Jesus know. Jesus waited two days before he left. Took him a day to get to where. So he took him a day to get to Bethany. So the day for the messenger. Okay, the man probably died or was near death when that man left. Okay, the messenger came. That took a day. Jesus waited two days. Then Jesus went to where the messenger came from to Bethany. Another day, four days. Okay, four days. Okay, so uh, you know, he gets there to Beth. He comes from Bethlehem to Bethany. Okay, and it's going to verse eighteen now. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. It's about two miles. You can walk that. Okay, you can walk that far. Not very far. Two miles. Okay, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary. So the Jews came out of Jerusalem that knew them. They just simply walked to Bethany and came there to comfort them. A lot of people, okay? Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a big deal in, in the Jewish uh, community where someone dies. People that they don't even know will come and try to comfort them. Yes, sir. They have people that come and they're like professional weepers. Yeah. Professional okay? And so this is what's going on. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. 
But Mary sat still in the house. Now we don't know why. And oh, Mary had more faith. Well, Mary says the same thing to the Lord that wanted to mess with. Okay? She says the same thing. So, I don't know, and I'm not saying that she didn't. Okay, but let's, let's go on. Okay, Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. So they had, they had some faith. Okay? She had some faith. She, you know, if you would have got here sooner, you could have healed him. Okay? Well, you know what that's doing? That's, that's saying, I would have faith up to this extent. Okay? If you would have been here at this time, at this situation, you could have done something about it. But now it's too late. You can't do anything about it. Okay. Brother and sister, God can do anything about anything that God wants to. He's God. If God can heal somebody, and he did, God can raise somebody from the dead. Amen. Pastor, I prayed for something that wasn't that big, great big of a deal, but God answered my prayer. Well, you know what? If you pray for something that is a great big deal, God can answer your prayer. That's right. God can do the little things, but he can't do the big things. God can do all things. He can do all things. Okay? So, you know, we give Martha a hard time because of her attitude. In Luke 10, 38, we've all been busy and stressed out. We need to pray. Yes. Look to the Lord. But look at her reaction here. She was having some faith, brother and sister. She believed that if Jesus would have came, that he would have been able to do so do something for Lazarus. And he could have healed him. Okay? And she also says, let's go on here, let's go on. But I know that even now, whatsoever you will ask of God, will give it, God will give it thee. Okay? Well, you know, sometimes we don't like when we're corrected. We don't like when God gets on our case about something. Uh oh. Man, we make the change that God's trying to make us. Oh, hallelujah. Make. Yeah. Hallelujah. Brother and sister, it builds our faith. Okay? She was corrected. Okay? Maybe she started spending time listening to Jesus and praying more. I didn't have Bibles. Maybe she went down to the temple and heard the word of God or whatever, sought God in her heart more. We see her having faith here. Okay? Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Glory. Verse 23. Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. When the dead are resurrected, I know that he's going to rise again. Okay? Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Now, Jesus told Peter in another place, when Jesus, Peter answered that way to the Lord. We've read about it. Okay, we've read about that. Shared it in preaching. Okay, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not be known against it. What rock? Not Peter. But this knowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay, so Martha knew. Okay. Remember we began this book and throughout we've been reiterating Jesus is revealing himself. He's not just our friend. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a good teacher. He's God. And he can do anything. And Martha is coming to this realization. Okay? She said, Unto him, yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And she had so sad, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master has come and called for thee. So this is the third time that Jesus says that Lazarus will live. And Martha responds about the last day, the resurrection, 
Jesus is the one who resurrects people and gets. Who do you think is going to make all those people resurrect? Jesus is. Amen. And if he can do it in the future, he can do it right now. He doesn't have to wait to some certain day. And God does things, as we're sharing in this, in this teaching, in God's time. If God wants to resurrect somebody in the future, he can do it. But you know what? If God wants to resurrect somebody right now, God can do it. Yeah. Because he is the resurrection and the life. Do you know that it's Jesus? By him all things are created. Do you know it was Jesus who breathed the breath of life into a lump of clay that was later called Adam. And that clay became a living soul. Huh? You mean to tell me God can take some dirt and bring it to life and make it a soul? And God can't bring somebody back to life that's been sick. God can't bring somebody. God can. He can, brother and sister. Okay? Let's put this into perspective. And do we believe that Jesus is the resurrection and life? Let's put it into perspective. In a hundred years. What's it gonna matter? We, talk, we began this Bible study talking about, so what? Somebody driving slow. <laughs> What's it going to matter in 100 years? You're going to be in the presence of the Lord. Huh? He is the Messiah. He is the Son of God. She believed. Okay? We we'll go on and we'll learn about his interaction with Mary here in the next Bible study, God willing. Okay, next Tuesday. But let's remember Thursday, 7 p.m., back here once again to worship the Lord. God can do anything. Amen. Amen. God can do anything. Anything. God can help you. There's no problem too big. And you know what? There's no problem too small. That's right. The Bible says to cast all of our care yeah. on him because he cares yeah. about us. Okay, so we'll stop right there. We're going to dismiss in prayer. God bless you as our prayer. Let me call for you this message, please. Our Father, we thank you for this time of Bible study and our let your word live in our hearts. Help us to apply it for our lives and our, our daily walk, Lord. We thank you. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of the impossible, Lord. And help us to ever look to you as the supplier and our caretaker. In his name, amen. amen. amen.